Hi, it's me. This is the exact message that NASA's official Voyager account tweeted a few days ago to celebrate Voyager 1's return after five months of receiving garbled messages. Finally, NASA has received a coherent message from interstellar space. Considering the events of the past five months, this is nothing short of a triumph. Located 15 billion miles away, Voyager 1 holds the title of the farthest human-made object in space. The spacecraft has been journeying for nearly half a century. However, due to a glitch that resulted in confusing communication patterns, the last five months have been particularly stressful in the spacecraft's history. NASA engineers faced two significant challenges in fixing the issue. Firstly, the spacecraft was constructed over five decades ago by individuals who have since retired. Therefore, the current team had to delve deep into old documents to understand how the probe and its computers functioned. Secondly, the technology on board Voyager is indeed outdated. Despite several software updates over the years, it still lags far behind modern devices. For comparison, your cell phone can handle over 100 billion instructions per second, while Voyager's computers can only process 8,000 per second. The glitch that took so long to fix stemmed from a combination of factors and the traditional strategy of turning it on and off didn't work due to the complexity of the issue. As for whether the problem is completely resolved, NASA engineers believe they have addressed the issue, but they continue to monitor the spacecraft closely to ensure there are no lingering issues. Like computers on Earth, Voyager communicates using the binary system. Voyager 1 operates using the binary system consisting of only zeros and ones, known as bits, which represent various types of information. These bits can encode anything from numbers and letters to more complex data like images or sounds. The spacecraft has three main computers and the glitch was traced back to one of them called the Flight Data System, FDS. The FDS collects two types of data, scientific data from instruments studying the universe and data about the spacecraft's health, indicating whether its components are functioning properly. After collecting this data in binary format, the FDS processes and combines it into a single data package. Once the data package is compiled, it's transmitted to the second computer, the Computer Command System, which houses the Telemetry Modulation Unit, TMU. The TMU modulates the binary data onto a carrier signal for transmission back to Earth. This signal is then transmitted via the Deep Space Network, DSN, a network of large radio antennas strategically positioned around the Earth, including locations like California, Spain and Australia, ensuring continuous communication with various spacecraft as the Earth rotates. Upon receiving the binary data, they're processed further in data centers where they're converted into human-readable formats, such as numerical values, graphs or images. These converted data are then utilized for analysis and research purposes. Since its launch, the spacecraft has been continuously sharing information. For the past few months, instead of sending its usual mix of scientific data and spacecraft health information, the TMU was transmitting a strange and repetitive sequence of ones and zeros that didn't make any sense. It turned out that the FDS wasn't handling the information correctly, causing incorrect data to reach the TMU. Consequently, the TMU was sending irrational binary messages back to Earth. Typically, when faced with such issues, the initial solution is to restart the FDS by turning it off and back on again. This approach often resolves most technological problems, both on Earth and in space. For instance, in 2010, when Voyager 2 experienced a similar issue due to a bit flip in its data, the team successfully resolved it by performing a reset command for the FDS memory. This on-off mechanism has also resolved glitches faced by other spacecraft, including the Hubble Space Telescope. 
Following the same strategy, a reset was performed on the FDS this time. Despite the restart, the problem persisted, leading engineers and scientists to devise more robust solutions. After months of meticulous troubleshooting, the Voyager team had a breakthrough. They identified a faulty chip as the root cause of all their problems. But how did they discover this? In March 2024, the mission team sent a poke command to the FDS. A poke command is a direct method to modify the values stored at specific memory addresses of a computer. It's typically used for low-level operations, especially in older computer systems. With poke, a programmer can interact directly with the hardware by altering values in memory. For example, in older systems like the Commodore 64, to change the text color, you could use a poke command. Each color is represented by a number, and the text color is managed by the value stored at a specific memory address. By executing a command, like poke 6467, you could change the text color to yellow, with 646 inches representing the address. The memory address responsible for the text color and 7 inches signifies yellow. This command gives programmers precise control over the system's physical features, making it a valuable tool for implementing exact changes to the hardware's functionality. Returning to Voyager 1, the POKE command allowed engineers to instruct the system to use different readout sequences in its software packages in an attempt to resolve the problem. Eventually, after the team received a response from the FDS after 22 and a half hours, engineers noticed some unusual readings from one part of the system. The readings appeared to be formatted incorrectly. After carefully interpreting the confusing signals, the engineers obtained a complete readout of the system's memory. By comparing this readout with one taken before the problem occurred, they could identify discrepancies and pinpoint the faulty chip. The Voyager team identified that about 3% of the computer's memory was corrupted, with one chip responsible for storing a portion of the FDS memory, including some important software code, malfunctioning. Since the spacecraft is billions of miles away and repairing the chip isn't feasible, the team decided to relocate the affected code to another location in the FDS memory. However, no single location was large enough to hold the entire code section, so the team devised a plan to divide the problematic code into pieces and store these pieces in different parts of the FDS. This process required multiple steps to modify and update any references to the code's new locations in the FDS memory. Initially, the team isolated the code responsible for handling spacecraft engineering data and relocated it to a new location in the FDS memory. On April 18th, after the necessary modifications and updates were made, they sent the instructions to Voyager 1. It took approximately 22.5 hours for the radio signal to reach the spacecraft and another 22.5 hours for the signal to return. However, the wait was worth it. When the mission team received a response from the spacecraft on April 20th, they discovered that their changes were successful. For the first time in five months, the Voyager team had effectively resolved the issue. They were able to monitor the spacecraft's health and status, indicating that their fix had been effective. The contact with Voyager 1 was never truly lost. It was more akin to being on a phone call where you can't hear the other person, but now they could finally hear it again. However, this was just the initial step. In the coming weeks, the team will continue to relocate and tweak the remaining affected parts of the FDS software. Once these adjustments are made, Voyager 1 will soon be ready to start transmitting scientific data again. The data sent by Voyager 1 are critical because the probe is now in a part of space where the sun's influence is weak. It's providing valuable information about cosmic rays and magnetic fields in a place we've never been able to study directly before. However, as Voyager 1 travels further away, staying in touch 
becomes more challenging. Signals take longer to travel and they're much weaker by the time they reach us. Despite these challenges, Voyager 1's journey continues. It's not headed towards any particular star or planet, but in about 40,000 years, it will pass within 1.6 light years of the star Gliese 445. It's true that Voyager 1 will pass relatively close to a star named Gliese 445. In human terms, this is a long time, but on the cosmic scale, it's merely a blink of an eye. Unfortunately, Voyager 1's days of collecting scientific data are numbered. The two Voyagers have been exploring the cosmos for nearly half a century, and their power is projected to run out sometime beyond 2025. After that, they will silently drift through the Milky Way, possibly for eternity. Scientists are hopeful that the spacecraft will continue to send scientific data until the mission's 50th birthday. Thank you for watching the video. Please leave us a comment. We wish you the best.